The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a critical moment in our history. In a few weeks, we will enter the third year of this pandemic. Canadians are tired. Tired of a pandemic that has created so much loss and such sacrifice for so many. Canadians are frustrated. Frustrated that so many have found themselves worse off while those at the very top have only increased their wealth and power. And many are afraid. Afraid of the next wave, of the next variant. But also afraid of the other crises we face. Of fires and floods caused by the climate change destroying their homes and their livelihoods. Of losing those they love to a toxic drug supply of not being able to get the care they need or that their loved ones need when they need it. But neither fear, frustration, or fatigue have won over Canadians' fundamental desire to take care of one another. We are here today at this moment because of a result of, of a failure of leadership. Mm -hmm. People were abandoned by government that argued over jurisdiction rather than helping people. People were abandoned because governments didn't take this convoy and its impact on people seriously. And they were abandoned by the police, some of whom stood with the occupiers and the occupation. It should never have come to this. It should have never come to a point in time where thousands of workers lost their wages because of blockades at bridges, thousands of, of workers lost wages because of blockades of one of the busiest shopping centers in Ottawa, retail workers, people who are already precariously employed. It should never come to the point where residents, families, children were harassed, intimidated, terrorized by the convoy. It should have never come to this. Many people right now are rightly concerned about the impact of the Emergencies Act, that it might crack down on protests in the future. What we're dealing with is not a protest. It is not peaceful. The organizers of this illegal occupation have been clear from the beginning. They haven't shied away from this. They have been brazen about it. They came here to overthrow a democratically elected government. It is a movement funded by foreign influence, and it is fed on disinformation. Its goal is to disrupt our democracy. We share the concern of many Canadians that the government may misuse the powers in the Emergency Act. So I want to be very clear. We will be watching. We will withdraw our support if at any point we feel these powers are being misused. I've been at many protests and strikes. And I've witnessed the full and brutal power of the police being used against peaceful protesters. So I want to make this clear as well. Indigenous land defenders, climate change activists, workers fighting for fairness, and any Canadian using their voice to peacefully demand justice should never be subject to the Emergencies Act. Mm -hmm. New Democrats will never support that. What has become very clear in this crisis is that there needs to be as well a serious examination of policing in Canada. Occupiers get hugs from the police while Indigenous and racialized protesters are met with the barrel of a gun. Yeah. There are several 
accounts, very troubling accounts, of current and former law enforcement and military members involved in these occupations. One of the requirements of the Emergencies Act is that after its invocation, there is a public inquiry into its use. This must include a full public inquiry into the role of law enforcement in these occupations, both in their support for the occupiers and in many cases, the refusal to enforce the law. The use of the Emergencies Act is because there is a failure by the government. They never should have gotten to this point. But the situation of a crisis in Ottawa requires additional action in order to avoid something serious from happening. We take the use of the Emergencies Act very seriously. No one wants to see a situation like that which occurred in 1970 happen again. Some people remember the use of the War Measures Act in 1970, the army in the streets. Many people are concerned that this kind of situation could occur again, and I understand those concerns. That is why the use of the Emergencies Act must be done carefully and with a great deal of seriousness. We are reassured that the use of the military is not being considered and the rights of the under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms will be maintained. Arbitrary arrest will not be justified under the Act. The NDP believes that there is no justification at present to use this Emergencies Act in Quebec. We are asking the Prime Minister for guarantees that the emergency measures will only be used where they are really required. The NDP is required, uh, is, is prepared at any time to use the mechanisms available to it. We're not giving the government a blank check. And we will keep our eyes on the government to avoid any abuse or misuse. We've heard a lot about divisions in our country. That division, sadly, has been fed and amplified by members in this House. Mm -hmm. That has to end. Using a pandemic as a political wedge to score points off your point opponents to try to win a leadership or an election is wrong. Yeah. And frankly, dangerous. This virus doesn't care who you voted for. Wearing a mask isn't a partisan activity. Vaccines save lives. And the vast majority of Canadians and members of Parliament know this and have supported vaccination efforts. We cannot let Canadians' trust in science and public health be eroded by po political opportunism. The pandemic is changing, and our response has to change as well. Restrictions are being lifted. We need a plan to get out of the pandemic, to get to the end of the pandemic, a plan based on science and our fundamental responsibility to take care of one another. Canadians who have done everything asked of them now want to know what to do next. Canadians have followed the rules, but they need to believe that restrictions are fair and make sense. We know that things can change quickly. New variants may appear, the evidence may change. But without a clear plan, confusion,
disinformation, and resentment grows. We believe that a plan to get to the end of the pandemic, to get us out of this pandemic, has to include the urgent repair of our healthcare system so that people can get the care when they need it. It has to include finishing the job of vaccination, especially of our children. And we have to make sure there's global access to vaccines so we avoid future variants and waves of infection. And we need to move forward on solving the problems that this pandemic has only made worse. The reality is working people have paid the price of this pandemic. While big companies took government money and gave out shareholder dividends and CEO bonuses, frontline workers got sick because they had to work without sick leave. Parents struggled to keep their kids at home while schools were closed and big box stores stayed open. You are right to be angry that life has only gotten harder over these past two years. That it is almost impossible to buy a home, to keep a roof over your head, or to rent a decent place to live. Because wealthy speculators are driving up the cost of housing. You are right to be angry that the cost of groceries go up to feed the profits of wealthy corporate grocery stores. You are right to be angry that you work hard and pay your taxes, but the super wealthy and big businesses don't pay their fair share. And you are right to be angry that your life has become harder while the super wealthy and powerful have only added to their wealth and power. I'm angry too. And when I get angry, I fight. But I learned long ago that my anger and my fight is not with the powerless. Your anger, your fight is not with Canadians. It's with those at the very top, the powerful who have built a system rigged against working people. We can change this. We can change this, but only if we come together to fight for a Canada that doesn't leave people behind while others profit. The story of this pandemic is not one of division. It's one of solidarity. It's a story of frontline healthcare workers showing up day after day in impossible situations. It is a story of grocery workers and farmers and truckers keeping us fed, of teachers doing their best to connect with children through screens. Our story is one of neighbors helping each other get vaccinated, helping each other when they're in need. We will not let the last few weeks define this pandemic for us. Canadians have sacrificed too much, lost too many loved ones, missed out on too many moments to allow our country to become divided by hate and violence. Don't let your anger turn into hatred. We know that hatred is like a fire. When it's allowed to grow, it will consume everything. As I hold my daughter, I often think about the world I want for her. I want her to walk through the world without fear. Mm -hmm. I want her to always feel like she belongs. I don't want her to face the same struggles that I have. I believe this is what we all want for our children. This is my hope, that our decisions in the coming days are guided by this desire to build a better and safer, more just world where all of our children believe that they belong. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions and comments? Question and commentaire, the Honourable Member for Scarborough Park, Rouge Park. Uh, Scarborough